I have no idea how to animate yet, but I wanted to write a script for a Christmas story. A lot of the stuff in here is borrowed. It is not my own work, simply a story told by a fan. With that being said, I think I'll change into my British storytelling voice. As the almanac turned over to the final page, the rays of God shined on mankind once more. Because tis the season to be jolly after all. With work etiquette around the world dropping faster than lumps of coal and socks on Christmas Eve, everyone was getting ready to take it easy. But there is one man who cannot afford time off. He goes by many names. I will call him, The Guardian. But something is wrong this year. He usually starts preparing for his annual duty in October. But this year, he is still in bed, he isn't ill or tired, but the time to pass the torch to the next guardian has arrived. And thus, the moon signals the stars to call for the Watcher. And the Watcher did, indeed, appear. A pale, skinny and tall man, wearing an all-black robe, and wielding a dual serpent staff, with the power to give and take life. The Watcher is an angel appointed the responsibility to watch over humanity. It is his duty to maintain balance in the world. There must not be an abundance of good or evil present, but rather a perfect homogeneous mix of neutrality. It is also his duty to seek out new guardians. And his duty he did. He appeared in a deserted field and walked for miles to the front of a large mansion-like house. He ringed the doorbell and a young man appeared, baffled by what he saw. Seeing as how Halloween is over and usually not partaken in by adults, the young man ran and got his father. The Chosen One had appeared, a middle-aged, tall, medium-built black man, with a large welcoming smile, along with his two children and wife appeared at the door, all wielding weapons. In a serious tone, the Watcher asked to come in, and transformed his attire into more appropriate human clothing. A hoodie a skinny jean, and some vans. The Watcher explained the situation to the Chosen One, and, as expected, was thrown out of the house. What follows is the Watcher convincing the Chosen One to take up the mantle, as new guardian, in a way similar to the Ten Plagues, only much more user-friendly. On December 16th the Chosen had called out to the Watcher. The Moon, hearing this, called to the stars to signal for the Watcher. And the Watcher did, indeed, appear. The Chosen One accepts the contract and swears the oath. The Chosen One ceases to exist, and is reborn as the Guardian. But it is not over, it has merely begun. With only eight days to Christmas Eve, all the presents of all the children have to be made, tested, packed, wrapped and shipped. And there is another problem. A much larger problem. The Guardian doesn't merely deliver presents to little children. He also gives hope and strength to the adults. But he was gone for a long time, and the spirit of Christmas had fade. Amongst all of this, a new threat has appeared. Rifikyomai, the personification of despair. He believes that the natural state of a human is nihilism, apathy and despair. He wishes humanity to return to this hollow state and mindlessly roam the earth for all eternity. He believes this is true balance in the world. And the sad part is he is right. But that is not okay with me or you or anyone else on this planet. We were put here to do good things and observe the miracles of God, not be slaves to the darkness. It wishes to put you down and keep you there. Evil always overdoes itself and that is why it is locked in a cage while good is allowed to roam the skies. It is because good and abundance eventually returns to a neutral state, while darkness tries to consume and corrupt all of creation. With this being said, it was time to call a state of emergency. And the watcher called, and the moon listened. And the moon cried, and the stars felt empathy. They sent the other guardians. All of them, every mortal life is precious to God. So precious in fact, that God assigned a guardian angel for every mortal spirit on earth. Whenever it is their time to pass on, the angel is forbidden by God to interfere with homeostasis. Balance must be kept. It is for this reason, that whenever an angel's mortal dies, they cry, and it rains. All of these angels of all mortal that have come and gone. And all of the angels of all mortals that still have to be born and all of the angels already on earth guarding the living, appeared before the Watcher. For the first time since the fires of the forge of creation was lit, the Watcher shed a tear of emotion, with their combined strength, the angels aided the Guardian in his trials and presents were being be made, tested, 
packed, wrapped and shipped billions and billions and trillions and trillions of times faster than ever before. Gifts appeared under Christmas trees. Where it is summer, the sun shined bright and the birds sang loud, and the trees swayed with joy, and all was good in the world. Where it is winter, the snows fell, the children laughed, and played and ran gaily. The children got presents, the adults got hope, and all was good in the world. Well, almost. After expending all of this energy, everyone was tired. The elves, the guardian, the angels, the reindeer and even the watcher. After expending all of this energy, everyone was tired. The elves, the guardian, the angels, the reindeer and even the watcher. Rifikyomai, the personification of despair, was stronger than ever. Even though the mortal spirits were rejuvenated, he is still nigh omnipotent because of all the life he's been sucking out of people over the past few years. And thus we have a final face-off between the burnt-out forces of good, and someone obsessed with turning everyone into zombies. To say that our heroes are outmatched is an understatement, and darkness is prevailing. It seems the Watcher has no choice but to phone it in. The Watcher summons his staff and plants it into the ground. He sends the God signal. All of the stars, and all of the planets, and all of the dust, and all of the fire, and all of creation turns and bows in the direction of the Father. He sits comfortably in his reclining chair. He gently raises his right hand, and with the extension of his index finger, he sends a ray of light to Earth. A ray more powerful than the most powerful gamma ray burst in his creation. And the light hits the Earth, but it does not affect anything or anyone, save for the darkness. All of the darkest darkness, inside of the deepest darkest corners of the world, along with Rifikyomai, was instantly destroyed, leaving no trace. As Rifikyomai fades he laughs and warns that he will be back and as soon as he disappears, darkness was born once more. But it is your decision to let it run rampant again. It is your responsibility to maintain balance. It is your choice to save or destroy humanity.